what profession or class should you play in Guild Wars 2? In this video, I'll cover every class or profession as we call it in Guild Wars 2. And next to that, I'll also cover all of the elite specializations for each profession, even the new ones that came with the End of Dragons expansion. You can unlock elite specializations as soon as you reach level 80 and have one of the expansions. These elite specializations are enhancements that add a new mechanic to your current profession. It also allows your profession to build new weapons in combat and use new abilities. You can only have one elite specialization active at a time, but don't worry too much about those just yet. Just see what profession fits your playstyle. You might have seen my last video about classes and professions, however that one got outdated, so here's a new one for you, totally updated for the years to come. I'll cover each profession and their respective elite specializations in about 3-4 to four minutes, so just the basics, enough to get you going. I won't cover builds, because builds change and profession mechanics don't. If you're totally new to Guild Wars 2, let's start with the difficult of each profession and their elite specializations. Take this with a grain of salt, it's a subjective list. It's based on my experience of playing Guild Wars 2 for the last 10 years. So if I tell you that a thief is a harder profession, don't let that discourage you from playing a thief. But if you want to play an easy profession to start with, this is a segment for you. You can skip this segment by using the timestamps in the video description. This video took a while to make, so I'd appreciate it if you drop a like, a sub, or share this video with your guildies if you like it. It's me Keo, and let's get into it. Alright, profession difficulty. I made some changes since my last video. I still consider the warrior, ranger, guardian and necromancer the easier professions. These are great professions to start playing Guild Wars 2 with. This is simply because these professions have some form of sustain that makes it easier to survive. For example, the ranger's pet or the necromancer's minions can help you in combat and make it easier for you when you're leveling. I made a change in the intermediate professions however. I consider the revenant and the mesmer as professions with an intermediate difficulty. The revenant and the mesmer are definitely professions you can start the game with, but might require a bit of time to get used to. I moved the engineer to the harder professions. Along with the thief and the elementalist, I consider the engineer a harder profession. Also, the great number of skills these professions have access to make them somewhat harder to learn and to master. I won't go over all the difficulties of all the elite specializations, but I put them in a chart or table to indicate how difficult they are. Once again, take this with a grain of salt, it's purely subjective. Alright, let's look at our first profession, the warrior. You are probably familiar with the warrior class or profession from other games. The warrior in Guild Wars 2 is a heavy armored profession that is mainly focused on dealing melee damage. Adrenaline is the warrior's unique profession mechanic. Whenever a warrior attacks, you build up adrenaline. You can see this adrenaline build up above Above your skill bar. With this adrenaline you can unleash a powerful burst attack with the weapon you are currently using. The more adrenaline you have, the more powerful the burst attack will be. The warrior skills boost their performance in combat. Warriors can also drop banners that increase the damage or health of your allies. This is really helpful whenever you are playing with others. The warrior has a naturally high health pool and has a high defense due to their heavy armor. This makes it easier for a warrior to survive in combat. If you have the Heart of Thorns expansion, a warrior can unlock the Berserker Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization allows for a reckless high damage approach to combat. The Berserker is able to use a new offhand weapon, the Torch. The Torch is used in combat to inflict damage over time effects to your foes. The new and unique profession mechanic of the Berserker is Berserk. The Berserk ability replaces the warrior's regular burst attack. Once a warrior gathers enough adrenaline to go Berserk, it increases their attack speed and damage. While in Berserk, the warrior's adrenaline builds up much faster faster and when the adrenaline bar is full, the warrior can use a primal burst attack. With the Path of Fire expansion, the warrior unlocks the Spellbreaker Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization gives the warrior more abilities to protect and play more defensively. The Spellbreaker is able to use a dagger in either hand. This allows for a more fast-paced melee focused approach to combat. Once you use the Spellbreaker Elite Specialization, it gains the Full Counter ability. The Full Counter ability lets you block incoming attacks. Whenever an enemy strikes you while you're channeling full counter, the attack will retaliate against them. The End of Dragons expansion lets the warrior unlock the Bladesorn Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization lets the warrior perform stronger burst attacks at the cost of speed. The Bladesorn lets you use an offhand pistol. This pistol allows for fast attacks in between your regular attacks. The Bladesorn Elite Specialization also replaces the warrior's adrenaline for flow and gives access to the Gun Saber. Whenever a Bladesorn enters combat, it will generate flow. Once a warrior gains more flow, it can be used to activate the Dragon Trigger. The Dragon Trigger converts flow into charges and these are used to perform a slow but devastating attack. And next to that the Bladesorn can 
activate the Gun Saber, which gives the Warrior 5 extra skills for great AoE damage. That's the Warrior and its elite specializations in a nutshell. Got a question? Drop a comment. I always answer them. Let's move on to the Guardian profession. The Guardian is another heavy armored profession that uses holy and light skills to damage foes or heal allies. You can compare a Guardian to Paladin-like classes in other games. The Guardian's unique profession mechanics are Virtues. Virtues give a Guardian passive bonuses over time, but Guardians can also activate their Virtues for an instant effect. The first Virtue, Virtue of Justice, burns foes every few attacks. Activate this Virtue to inflict burning on your next attack. The second Virtue, Virtue of Resolve, passively regenerates your health. You can activate it to heal yourself and allies instantly. Your third and last Virtue, Virtue of Courage, gives you an Aegis periodically that blocks incoming attacks. Activate the Virtue to instantly grant Aegis to you and your allies. Activating the Virtues puts them on a cooldown. When this happens, you can't benefit from the Virtues passive effects as long as they are on cooldown. Guardians can do a lot of damage, while they also have a lot of skills to protect themselves and allies with. Therefore, the Guardian is a great profession to start playing Guild Wars 2 with. Whenever a Guardian unlocks an Elite Specialization, their Virtues active effects change, but their passive effects remain the same. If you have the Heart of Thorns expansion, the Guardian can unlock the Dragon Hunter Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization allows for a more stationary, bait and lure type of approach for the Guardian. The Dragon Hunter can use a longbow in combat. This allows for a more long-range playstyle for the melee focused Guardian. The Guardian's Virtues also change when using Dragon Hunter Elite Specialization. Your first Virtue now hurls a burning spear at your foe. This tethers you to your foe and they receive negative effects periodically and it can also be used as a crowd control ability. Your second virtue now lets you leap to the target area. On impact you heal allies in the area. Your third virtue still grants Aegis but also blocks incoming attacks in front of you. However, you are still vulnerable from the sides and from behind. With the Path of Fire expansion, the Guardian can unlock the Firebrunt Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is great if you want to support your allies but also want to damage your foes. The Firebrand can also use an axe in combat and its virtues active effects have changed once more. The axe allows the Firebrand to play more stationary and supportive. But don't let that fool you, the axe has great damage over time effects too. Your virtues now open a tome of lore that gives the Firebrand access to new skills. Your first virtue now opens a tome that grants you new skills to damage your foes. The second virtue opens a tome that grants skills to heal you and your allies. The third virtue now opens a tome to protect allies and provide them with boons. The Firebrand is also able to use Mantras to heal and support allies or damage foes. These Mantras can be used instantly and multiple times before they go on cooldown. The End of Dragons expansion lets the Guardian unlock the Willbender Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization turns the slow, protective Guardian into a fast-moving, self-centered soldier. The Willbender can now use a sword in their offhand. Their new sword skills allow for more fast-paced attacks and more mobility. The Willbender's flames replace your virtues, active effects and leave a trail of flames. Your first virtue now lets you dash towards an enemy which leaves a trail of damaging flames. Your second virtue now lets you dash in your preferred direction and leaves a trail of damaging flames that can also heal you. Your third virtue lets you shadow step a short distance and leaves a circle of damaging flames. Once you land, you gain a short effect that grants you boons whenever you strike foes. That's the Guardian for you and let's get going with the Revenant. The Revenant is the only profession in Guild Wars 2 that requires an expansion to play. In order to play it, you either need the Heart of Thorns, Path of Fire or End of Dragons expansion. The Revenant is yet another heavy armored profession. The Revenant is a profession that uses the powers of the mists to deal damage to foes or support their allies. In order to do so, Revenants channel legends of the past that all have their own set of skills. Some legends are better at dealing damage, while others are great at supporting your allies. A Revenant can commune with two legends, but can only channel one at the same time. This means that you can have two legends in combat, and you can switch back and forth between those two legends. A Revenant uses energy to channel the powers of these legends. This energy is displayed above your skill bar. Once your energy runs out, you can't use your legend skills. You'll have to wait until it has regenerated or you have to swap to your other legend. The usage of the two legends and the energy system might be less straightforward for some players and therefore the Revenant can be a bit harder to get into if you're completely new to Guild Wars 2. But if you like it, give the Revenant a chance. 
If you own the Heart of Thorns expansion, the Revenant can unlock the Herald Elite specialization. The Herald gives the Revenant more defensive and supportive abilities to survive and support allies. A Herald can now use a shield in combat. The shield skills are great because they can provide boons and heal allies, but it can also be used to protect yourself. The Revenant can channel with the legendary dragon, Glint. Glint gives you access to facets that support your allies. Facets can only be used when channeling with Glint. Whenever a facet is activated, it pulls the supportive boons to nearby allies while it drains your energy. When you activate that same facet again, you can use it to deal damage and inflict negative effects to your foes. The Path of Fire expansion lets the Revenant unlock the Renegade Elite specialization. The Renegade is great at dealing damage and can provide specific boons to allies. As a Renegade, you are able to invoke the powers of the legendary char, Kala Scorch Razor. Kala lets the renegade and power allies, bomb their foes and reduce the cooldown of your abilities and the abilities of your allies. The renegade can also use a short bow in combat. This allows for mid-range combats and damage. The renegade can summon Kala's warband from the mists to aid you in battle. These warband members deal damage to foes but can also provide some boons to you and your allies. The end of dragons expansion lets the revenant unlock the vindicator. The vindicator can use a great sword in combat. This allows the vindicator to deal great damage from up close. A Vindicator gains access to the Legendary Alliance stance, which lets you channel the powers of Saint Victor and Archimorus. So, the Legendary Alliance stance channels two legends instead of one. Using the skills of Saint Victor lets the Vindicator be more supportive and defensive. This while the skills of Archimorus are all offensive abilities. Additionally, the Vindicator's dodge is replaced by a leap. This leap leaves you up in the air for a brief period and then lets you crash down dealing damage on impact. That's the Revenant and all the heavy armor professions in the game. If you haven't by now, leave a like on this video and let's move on to the medium armor professions. Starting off with the Ranger. The Ranger is a medium armored profession that uses the power of nature and other survival tactics to deal damage. Of course, a Ranger can also use bows in combat along with other weapons. A Ranger can be compared to Rangers or Archer-like classes from other games. The Ranger's unique profession mechanic is the Ranger's pet. Your pet aids you in combat and even has its own ability. You can have a second pet on standby and switch to another one in combat. A ranger and their pet fight as one. This means that some of your skills benefit you and your pet. You can tame and collect more pets as you venture through the world. Each pet family has their own ability, so it's smart to use a pet that fits your current playstyle or situation. And because of this, a pet makes the ranger a great profession to start playing Guild Wars 2 with. Your pet can deal damage, but can also take damage for you. This gives you some more time to adapt to your situation. The Heart of Thorns expansion allows the Ranger to use the Druid Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is often used to heal and support allies, but can also deal a good amount of damage. The Druid uses a staff to heal allies and cleanse them from any negative effects. While healing allies with a staff, a Druid gains Astral Force. This astral force fills up a bar above your health bar. When this bar is full, you can enter the celestial avatar form. The celestial avatar form gives the druid a new array of skills to quickly and effectively heal your allies with. Also, the new glyphs that the druid gains access to change based on your current state. If you are not in the celestial avatar form, they'll deal damage to your foes. If you are using the glyphs while in celestial avatar form, they'll heal or support your allies. If you own the Path of Fire expansion, the Ranger can unlock the Soul Beast Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is often used to inflict a great amount of damage to your foes. A Soul Beast is able to wield a dagger in their main hand. This allows for a fast paced combat style and it inflicts damage over time effects to your foes. As a Soul Beast, the Ranger is now able to merge with their pet. Once a Soul Beast merges with their pet, they'll go into Beast Mode. Whenever a Soul Beast is in Beast Mode, the effects of certain attributes are significantly increased. The Soul Beast will also gain a number of new skills. These skills are based on the type of pet you merge with. Also, the Soul Beast's stances are great since they instantly give you a number of bonuses while in combat. The End of Dragons expansion allows the Ranger to unlock the Untamed Elite Specialization. This elite specialization highly benefits from foes that are knocked down, stunned or any other form of crowd control. An untamed can use a hammer in combat. This weapon can disable foes or deal increased damage whenever foes are disabled. This is based on whether an untamed is unleashed or not. Whenever an untamed unleashes, their pet and the untamed gain a number of new abilities. 
your pets will gain abilities that inflict more damage to foes whenever they are disabled. And the Untamed gains a number of new abilities to disable them with. You can either untame the ranger or the ranger's pet. Based on what you untamed, you gain different skills. And you can easily switch back and forth between untaming the ranger or the pet. Moving on to the Thief, the next medium armored profession on the list. As the name suggests, the Thief uses techniques to steal from foes and uses tricks to deal damage to foes. A Thief can be compared to rogues or assassins in other games. The Thief has two profession mechanics. A Thief has a steal skill, which you can use to steal items from your foes. Whenever you steal something, you gain an item that you can either consume for boons or you can use it to deal damage. The effects of steel can be enhanced by selecting specific traits. Another unique mechanic of the Thief is initiative. The Thief is unique since it has no cooldowns on their weapon skills. Instead, a Thief uses initiative to perform skills. Initiative is shown above your skill bar and replenishes every second. Since the Thief has no cooldowns and uses initiative instead, it allows them to attack in rapid succession. Thieves can also pop in and out of stealth to surprise or hide from foes. And next to that, Thieves can even shadow step quickly to engage or disengage from your foes. Thieves might be a bit harder to get into for new players. However, if you played roguelike classes before or really dig their playstyle, you have to give the Thief a shot. If you own the Heart of Thorns expansion, the Thief can unlock the Daredevil Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization can deal a great amount of damage, and it also increases the mobility of the Thief even further. As a Daredevil, the Thief is able to use a Staff. You don't use the Staff to deal damage from afar, instead you use it for rapid melee attacks. As a Daredevil, you are able to dodge 3 times instead of the regular 2 times. The extra dodge makes the daredevil even more mobile than the thief. You can attach additional effects to these dodges by selecting specific traits. For example, there are traits that increase your damage after you successfully dodge. The daredevil is mobile, but the thief's path of fire elite specialization is not. The Path of Fire expansion allows the Thief to unlock the Deadeye Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is stationary and deals damage from a distance. The Deadeye takes the role of a sniper and can still deceive foes or reposition themselves. The Deadeye can use a rifle in combat. When using a rifle, a Deadeye can walk around freely and shoot foes on the go. However, you can choose to kneel down, which gives you a number of new skills, which increases your range to damage. As a Deadeye, your steel skill is replaced by Deadeye's Mark. Deadeye's Mark is used on foes to generate Malice. Malice is shown above your health bar and increases the damage of your stealth attacks. The more Malice you have, the more powerful your stealth attacks will be. The End of Dragons expansion changes the role of the Thief a little bit. If you own the End of Dragons expansion, a Thief is able to unlock the Spectre Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization can deal a good amount of damage to foes, but can also support allies. That's something a Thief could not do before. A Spectre is able to use a Scepter in combat. The Spectre's Scepter skills have two purposes. They can deal damage to your foes or heal and support allies. You choose. Your steel skill also has been replaced by Siphon. Siphon can be used on foes or allies. You can steal from foes to gain Shadow Force, but you can also use it on allies to give them a barrier and protect them from harm. When you use it on an ally, you also tether them to you. This creates a link between you and them, which you can benefit from in Shadow Shroud. The Spectre's Shadow Shroud is fueled by Shadow Force, which is gained by using your skills. It works similarly to the Necromancer's Death Shroud, which we'll discuss later in the video. The Shadow Shroud is a form that gives you a number of new skills, and these new skills grant boons to allies whenever you attack an enemy. The last medium profession on this list is the Engineer. The Engineer can be compared to classes that use technology in other games. For example, they use bombs, a flamethrower, grenades, pistols, turrets and more. The unique profession mechanic of the Engineer is the Toolbar. The Toolbar is displayed above your weapon skills and contains a number of extra skills. These skills change based on your selected weapon kit. For example, I can select a flamethrower as a utility skill and I would then gain a tool belt skill that inflicts burning without the use of a flamethrower. The weapon kits and the toolbar skills offer a wide variety of offensive and defensive abilities. This gives the engineer countless opportunities to play their class. However, this can be overwhelming to new players who just started playing Guild Wars 2, but don't let that stop you from playing the engineer. The Heart of Thorns expansion lets the Engineer unlock the Scrapper Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is great at dealing damage, but can also support your allies. 
The Scrapper is able to wield a hammer in combat. The hammer gives the engineer some defensive abilities, but it also has a powerful stun. The unique profession mechanic of the Scrapper are its gyros. The Scrapper's gyros can be chosen and summoned through your utility skills. Most of these gyros give beneficial effects to you and your allies. You can use a gyro's utility skill for an effect, but you can also trigger its toolbar skill for another effect. The Path of Fire expansion lets the Engineer unlock the Hollow Smith Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is great at dealing damage and unlocks a new form for the Engineer. The Photon Forge is the Hollow Smith's special form that grants a new set of skills. When you use skills in the Photon Forge, you generate heat. If your heat reaches the maximum, your Photon Forge overheats and you cannot use it for a brief period. The Hollow Smith is also able to wield a sword in combat. The sword's abilities become more effective the more heat you have generated. Also, your new Exceed skills benefit from this heat. So, the more heat you have accumulated, the more effective your skills become. The End of Dragons expansion lets the Engineer unlock the Mechanist Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization summons a Jade Mech that is good at dealing damage but can also support your allies. The Mechanist is able to use a Mace in combat. A Mace is used to damage or stun foes, but the Mace can also support allies in combat with boons when you successfully land a few hits. The Jade Mech replaces the toolbar skills with Mech Commands. These commands instruct your Jade Mech to perform certain actions. The commands change based on the traits you have selected. Some traits give the Jade Mech damaging abilities and others give supportive abilities instead. The Signets the Mechanist gains access to passively increase the effectiveness of the Mechanist and the Jade Mech. The Mechanist can activate the Signets for an instant effect but this puts their passive bonuses on a cooldown. If you liked the video so far, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Let's move to the light armored professions. The first light armored profession is the Necromancer. The Necromancer is a spellcaster that uses dark and blood magic. Necromancers can steal or corrupt boons and turn them into negative effects. Necromancers in Guild Wars 2 can be compared to warlocks or summoners in other games. The unique profession mechanic of the Necromancer is the Death Shroud. Whenever something dies near the Necromancer or they use specific skills, a Necromancer gains life force. This life force is used to fuel the Death Shroud. You can find your accumulated life force above your skill bar. When you enter the Death Shroud, you gain a number of new skills to deal damage to your foes with the life force you've collected. The Death Shroud will also provide you with an extra health bar based on the life force they've collected. So entering the Death Shroud can save you if you are in a dire situation. A Necromancer can also summon minions to aid them in combat. Minions follow the Necromancer around and when summoned, they have a special skill to heal the Necromancer or deal damage to their foes. The Necromancer is a great profession for new Guild Wars 2 players. It has so much survivability with the Death Shroud and the minions can be used as shields to prevent them from taking damage. Definitely try out this profession if you're new to the game. If you picked up the Heart of Thorns expansion, the Necromancer can unlock the Reaper Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is great at dealing damage while it also has great survivability. The Reaper can use a Greatsword in combat. The Greatsword has great crowd control and damaging abilities. The Reaper Shroud that the Reaper gains access to is similar to the Death Shroud. You still get an extra health bar and you can still fuel the Shroud with life force. However, the Reaper Shroud skills are more focused on dealing AoE damage to your foes. This makes it really useful in open world PvE content. Combine this with the AoE skills from the Greatsword and you're in for a good time. Shouts let your character chant a certain phrase that has immediate effect. These shouts are basically instant cast skills that can buff you or negatively affect your foes. The Path of Fire expansion lets the Necromancer unlock the Scourge Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization is great at inflicting damage over time effects to your foes, but Scourges can also support their allies. The Scourge can wield a torch in their offhand. The torch lets the Scourge inflict damage over time effects and gives them access to a powerful crowd control skill. In contrast to other Necromancer Elite specializations, the Scourge does not have a shroud. Instead, it uses Sand Shades. Sand Shades are summoned at your preferred location and deal damage to foes, but can also provide barrier to allies. Barrier protects your allies from harm. The Sand Shades also have skills tied to them, which you can use at the cost of your life force. Moving on to the last elite specialization for the Necromancer. The End of Dragons expansion lets the Necromancer unlock the Harbinger elite specialization. This elite specialization can deal damage at the cost of their own health 
but can also support allies. A Harbinger can use a pistol in their main hand. The pistol can quickly inflict damage over time effects to foes and has a crowd control ability. The unique profession mechanic for the Harbinger is the Harbinger Shroud. The Harbinger Shroud functions like the other Necromancer Shrouds. However, the Harbinger Shroud gives the Necromancer a number of mobility and damaging skills. But more importantly, while in the Harbinger Shroud, a Harbinger will accumulate Blight over time. Blight is an effect that reduces your maximum health. So, staying in the Harbinger Shroud for a while can make you more vulnerable. However, Blight can also be used to your advantage by selecting specific traits. There are traits that increase your damage or increase your healing the more Blight you have accumulated. The Harbinger can also use elixirs in combat. When you throw them at your foes, it will damage them and inflict a negative effect. When you stand in the impact area of an elixir, you will gain Blight. Depending on your playstyle, you can stand in the impact area of an elixir to accumulate more Blight, or be safe and just throw them from a distance. Let's head on to the next Light Armor profession on this list, the Elementalist. I've been playing this profession since the release of Guild Wars 2 in 2012, and it's still one of my favorites. The Elementalist uses the power of the elements to deal damage to foes or heal allies. Elementalists share similarities with mages and shamans from other games. The unique profession mechanics of the elementalists are the elemental attunements. An elementalist can attune to different elements that change their weapon skills based on the element. Fire gives you heavy damage and burning abilities. Water slows your foes and supports your allies. Air gives you heavy damage and control abilities, and Earth gives you damage over time and protection abilities. The Elementalist offers endless possibilities to play. Every element gives you new weapon skills to play around with. The Elementalist, like all other professions or classes, has access to different weapon sets. And each weapon set gives the Elementalist new skills based on their selected attunement. And thus, this gives the Elementalist access to 20 skills at the same time. Therefore, it might not be the best pick for newer players, but hey, Hey, don't let that stop you. The Elementalist was my first profession and it's still my main character to this day. The Heart of Thorns expansion lets the Elementalist unlock the Tempest Elite Specialization. This Elite Specialization deals a good amount of damage while it can also be used to support your allies. The Tempest is able to use a Warhorn in their offhand. The Warhorn is great since it gives the Tempest more supportive and crowd control abilities. The unique profession mechanic of the Elementalist is the Overload ability. When you stay in an attunement for a brief period, Period, you are able to overload that attunement. This overload ability is a strong AoE skill that takes a few seconds to channel. Overload fire turns the tempest into a fiery tornado that damages foes. Overload water turns you into a bubble that heals allies and cleanses them from negative effects. Overload air summons a lightning storm that damages foes and overload earth damages foes and gives you protective boons. The powerful fire expansion lets the elementalist unlock the weaver elite specialization. This elite specialization can deal a great amount of damage. As a weaver, you can wield a sword in your main hand. The sword gives the weaver more damage and mobility skills. The profession mechanic of the weaver is that you can now attune to two elements at the same time. For example, if I tap into fire attunement and then into air attunement, you get a new weapon skill. Your weapon skill bar will now have two fire skills, two air skills and a new skill in the middle that has attributes of both elements. This new skill is called a dual attack. This elite specialization adds even more skills to the elementalist and it is therefore hard to master. However, the damage output can be insane and therefore it can be really satisfying to play the weaver if you play it right. But keep in mind it does have a high skill level. Moving on to the last elite specialization for the elementalist. The end of dragons expansion lets the elementalist unlock the catalyst elite specialization. The catalyst can use a hammer in combat. The hammer allows for a more melee focused approach to the elementalist. The profession mechanic of the catalyst is the jade sphere. You can summon a jade sphere to create a combo field and use it to grant boons to your allies. The effect of this jade sphere is based on the catalyst's current attunement. This can be helpful when you are playing with other people. Other players can use skills in your combo field and benefit from it. If you want to know more about combo fields, you might want to check out my combat video. Moving on to the last light armor profession in Guild Wars 2, the Mesmer. If you made it this far, you might as well leave a comment and subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate it. The Mesmer uses manipulations, clones, phantasms and deceptions to deal damage and deceive their foes. The unique profession mechanics of the Mesmer are phantasms, clones and shatter skills. Phantasms and clones are summoned by using your skills. Phantasms are transparent and deal a high amount of damage. 
you can easily distinguish them from the Mesmer itself. Clones, however, are exact copies and are hard to distinguish from the Mesmer. Use Phantasms to deal damage to your foes and use clones to deceive them. After you have summoned a few clones with your skills, you are able to shatter them on your foes. You have a number of different shatter skills, and each of them has a different effect. The intensity of these skills are increased the more clones you have. Your first shatter skill always damages your foes. The second shatter skill confuses your foes. The third shatter skill stuns or dazes them, and the fourth skill makes you invulnerable for a brief period. The Mesmer has an extensive amount of skills to deceive, evade and move around with. This makes the Mesmer incredibly fun, but somewhat hard to play. However, in contrast to the Elementalist, the Mesmer does not have that many skills. So it might be a bit harder to get into as a new Guild Wars 2 player, but you'll get the hang of it eventually. If you picked up the Heart of Thorns expansion, a Mesmer can unlock the Chronomancer Elite specialization. The Chronomancer uses time and space to deal damage and support allies. The Chronomancer can use a shield in combat. This allows for a more defensive playstyle. The unique profession mechanic of the Chronomancer is its ability to create a rift in space and time. Your Shatter skills remain mostly the same. However, your fourth skill has been replaced by Continuum Split. Continuum Split destroys all of your clones and creates a new timeline. In this brief moment, you are able to use your skills as you normally would. However, when the Continuum Split effect expires, you return to your previous location, health, endurance and skill recharges. When you use Continuum Split, it's smart to use skills that have a long cooldown. So, when the effect expires, you can use them again. Also, the Chrono Monster can use wells that reduce the recharge of your and your ally's skills. And these wells also increase their spell costing and attack speed. A true Master of Time, if I'd say so. Once you have the Path of Fire expansion, the Mesmer can unlock the Mirage. The Mirage allows for a more deceptive and ambush style of play. As a Mirage, you can wield an axe in combat. The axe skills inflict damage over time effects to your target, but are also used to deceive your target. The unique mechanic of the Mirage is the Mirage Cloak. When a Mesmer uses the Mirage trait line, it loses the ability to dodge. Instead, you will gain a Mirage Cloak when you dodge. You won't move away from your target as dodging normally would, but instead you gain a brief window where the Mirage evades attacks and gains an ambush skill. This is a special skill only the Mirage can use when they use their Mirage Cloak. So a Mirage can evade attacks without moving away from their targets. Luckily the Mirage also gains a number of other utility skills that lets them teleport a short distance. Moving on to the last elite specialization of this video, the Virtuoso. When you own the end of dragons expansion a mesmer can unlock the virtuoso the virtuoso is able to deal a lot of damage quickly the virtuoso can also use a dagger in their main hand this is not a melee weapon however the virtuoso uses the dagger to send blades out to your foes at range the profession mechanic of the virtuoso is that it drops the ability to create clones instead the virtuoso summons blades when they're using their skills or attacking even outside of combat the virtuoso can generate blades these blades float above the Virtuoso and they can fire them at their foes. The Virtuoso's Shatter skills have also changed, but their effect remains somewhat the same. The first skill still inflicts damage, the second one still inflicts negative effects, the third one still stuns, and the last one still protects. A big advantage of the blades over clones is that the blades remain after combat. Clones disappear when you defeat an enemy, you have to resummon them when you enter combat. Blades however stay, and you can use them when you re-enter combat. And there, that's all the professions and all their elite specializations in Guild Wars 2. This video took a long time to create, so I'd appreciate it if you drop a like, share the video with your guildies, or leave a comment. And subscribe to the channel, of course. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, I always answer. Thanks for watching, check out my other videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!